Mr. Sonia, and it's BK Copenhagen. Yeah, we can see that. So before I give it to you, I need to introduce you to the audience. And uh, we are so fortunate that we have seniors all the way from Europe, and she's joining us for the first time. A brief introduction about her, that she's the national coordinator of Brahma Kumaris in Denmark. And she serves, she teaches meditation in the prison service in Copenhagen, which is the capital city in Denmark. Uh, she also, in 2009, was instrumental in developing the BK Environment Initiative. She has all sorts of stories to tell us. We'll go in that details with her. And you know, the Brahma Kumari's Environment Initiative is in order to add the inner dimension at all the discussions which happen in the climate change conferences all over the world. And she's been actively participating in them. They are called the COP, COP conferences. She's been doing that since 2009. And also she conducts a lot of green retreats for the BK community around the world. And as always, before I pass it on to her, I'll, a few lines I'll speak in the form of a poem for you, sister. So we have with her sister Sonia, who's the national coordinator for Denmark. She creates an impact in climate change dialogues with her charismatic spark. Through her talks, she leaves on the speakers an indelible mark which takes them into the light from the scary and frightening dark. She says, play with the Supreme in the divine park and don't worry about the presence of the mighty Maya shark. That's because Maya will scare you constantly like a dog bark, but with the Supreme support, let's continue to sing like a lark. And finally, spirituality teaches us to be soft inside, though having a tough bark, and mold ourselves in any situation, like the angles of an arc. arc. <laughs> right. So thank you so much once again for joining. And the stage is all yours. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for the beautiful introduction and the very special poem. And I see my doctor friends are here online, Dr. Ashok Mehta and all the doctors. And actually I'm a nurse by profession and I worked in hospitals. And the last 20 years I worked as a nurse for general practitioners here in Copenhagen. I stopped 10 years ago nursing. So, but um, healthcare is very close to my heart. And as an, I know we're speaking about uh, dedication today, but as it is values in healthcare, I thought this is how I see Mother Earth actually. I see her as an old lady in the old people's home. And she's not well. She's quite sick actually. She's terminal ill, you would say, our old lady. And, uh, but our duty, we never leave the old ladies just lying there in our beds, do we? We give them eat something to eat spoon by spoon. We look after them. We turn them over. We had our spreadsheets and who is doing what at what time. Make sure they're hydrated. And so we have to do the same with Mother Earth. <laughs> and I'm sorry I couldn't join you for the first hour because actually we had a preparation meeting for uh, the climate change conference. <laughs> And they are very difficult to get timings. But I could see on the program here that it's such an interesting uh, um, uh, topics on your, uh, on your first hours. I will make sure I look at it online afterwards. So dedication. And I was a bit surprised they asked me to do dedication talk because I never thought of myself as a person especially dedicated. But uh, you never know what impression you give to others. So I thought it's a nice surprise. And I looked up the word dedication on uh, the internet. And it comes from, it's from Middle English, from Latin, from uh, dedicare, which means devotee. So it's actually the Indus, Indus, English word for being devoted to something is the same word. But uh, then I find something interesting that in the <clears throat> Middle Ages, uh, 1500, 
that had a special meaning of the word dedication in the area of literature and musical composition. And there they interpret dedication to give oneself to a purpose. And I can see that you also had the word purpose in your previous hour. So things are just so beautifully aligned. So today I would like to share um, what qualities in my own life has been, what qualities has supported dedication, what values have supported the dedication. But I'd like to start with the story about purpose which is a story from my own life and uh, the work on purpose. And I, as I started with the Brahma Kumaris now nearly 40 years ago, 37 years ago, and like 10 years into my spiritual journey, I did this course in self-managing leadership. And some of you have, might have done that course. And there we spent the whole day on purpose. What's the purpose of your life? And I also know that as a spiritual practitioner, some would say that to define your purpose could also be close to ego, <laughs> because in a sense, we are all souls and we are all God's children. And to put anything extra on top of that would be an expression of ego. But uh, I will not go down that road, but I will take the other road instead, saying that it helped my self-progress immensely to, to think about purpose. And before that, uh, when I started my spiritual journey, I was an atheist. I worked in the hospital. I was very young at that time. I was only 18. And uh, I was in intensive care unit for children. And I was uh, having duties looking after the respirators for the young kids. And one kid, he was terminal, so we had to close the respirator. So he was leaving the body there and then. And the doctors were there, the priest was there, the parents were there, but it was my shift, so I was also there. And it left such an impact on me because I wonder how come these young, small children, he was only five, he had kind of curly blonde hair and looked very sweet. And I was thinking, how come these young children have to leave the body? The, what kind of sin, if you say in Christian background, can they have done? And I think they haven't done anything yet. So I wonder why this is happening and Christianity couldn't give me an answer. So I left actually the church. Next day I went to the office and signed out and I said, there is no God in this universe. So that was my start on my spiritual journey. Um, but then when I met Brahma Kumaris, I woke up to the notion of there is a God. Wow, how fantastic. And I was kind of in love with having a supreme parent, a supreme friend, the divine in my life. So I used to think wherever God wants to put me, I will be there and whatever he wants me to do, I will do it. But then I took this course on self-managing leadership. And uh, there were, we were asked what have life trained you to do? And what's the purpose of your existence? And I started to think, okay, maybe to give my life to God, to be an instrument of God is only half the story. The other half is that I have in my hands the tools to shape my own destiny. My thinking, my behavior, my decision will anyhow shape my destiny. So it's not only up to God, it's also up to me. And maybe we can share, we take 50-50. <laughs> so 50, I give myself to the Supreme and 50, I take myself in my own hands. And I was thinking uh, about my own purpose. And 
this word hope came up to bring hope to people. And then of course, we all know that if you put words to your purpose, you also understand why you end up in hopeless situations. Because that's where my, where I'll be on duty. That's where I can do my job. Now, for example, we have doctors here in the audience. The moment you take a decision to become a doctor, you also take at the same time a decision to work with sick people all your life. So if another sick person knocks your door, you don't say, oh no, why do I only meet sick people in my life? <laughs> you have already said yes to it. And I've seen it with the doctors, the more complicated illness, the more enthusiastic the doctors get. So, and it's the same if I, for example, define my life purpose to be spread love and spread loving vibrations, then of course I would often come in situations without love because that's where I can add my speciality. I can add my vibrations. So if I define myself working with hope, I would often end up in hopeless situations. And yes, I have often done so. Uh, you mentioned working in, in prison, which is a very hopeless situation for many. And I also worked in, in the psychiatric department of the hospital uh, in the prison, prison hospital psychiatric award. And that's really a kind of hopeless place. Um, but then when we started on this environment journey, I realized that is the biggest hopeless is to try to, to work with climate change because all statistics and all uh, trends are just going the wrong way, you can say. Overall, we are moving towards a new world, a new spring of humanity, but in the immediate view, it's kind of pretty hopeless. So that's where I have to add my hope. And that's, of course, to have the purpose in the back of your head as I move around through life has answered many questions and will, has increased my dedication to whatever I do. And talking about dedication, I, I thought, them, what values support my dedication? And they will not be the same as yours. You have to divine, uh, define the values, the decisions that support your dedication. They will be very different to mine. But I can only share mine with you. And the first one that came to mind was actually something I called a fun factor. <laughs> and uh, maybe the more spiritual world would be to have joy in whatever you do. It has to be some kind of lightness, some kind of humor, some kind of ability to, to, to enjoy the process, to enjoy whatever I do. And uh, we all know that when you enter a family situation or a new workplace or a new project, whatever it might be, there are elements in it that you don't enjoy. There will always be that. But uh, overall, it has to be with, with joy, with happiness. I embrace a task or I dedicate myself to something. And for myself, if the, it's not there, I wouldn't do it. That's, that's, <laughs> and if there is something I have to do and I can't find the joy, I would just have to stop doing it until I find the, the fun or the joy again. And there is a way to finding joy in everything I do. You can find it inside, but sometimes you have to find it on the outside. So, uh, so that's a very important value for me, personally. And the other value I found was um, 
uh, yeah, you can call it balance or you can call it the balance between male and female or the process and the goal or yin and yang. But for sure, for myself, it has to be a balance between being process oriented, which is the female quality and being goal focused, which would be the male quality. And uh, if I get too focused on the goal, which can happen to me, uh, I want to get ready. I want to see the end of the project. I want to have a complete result. I want to finish this so I can move on to next step. If that's happening too much, I will not enjoy the process. And then uh, it becomes stressful and become too hard to do the job. And sometimes it's the opposite way, the other way that I, I lose the goal focus or I, uh, I become too lost in the process. So everything, we work as a team, but the, actually the team building and the team relationship maybe take overhead. <laughs> So we lose the view of the task we have to do. We are so focused on the team and team building that uh, we never get to do anything. And that can happen in, 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 or if I'm starting a project, you can be lost in trying to understand what it is all about and read article and analysis that you actually never get going. And so it has to be a balance between being process oriented, process, and to be goal focused. And when I strike that balance, things work quite easily to dedicate yourself to a task and get this nice flow of things. And you have maybe process, goal, work, and step by step, or you have them merged at the same time, that can also happen but the both elements has to be there in order to enjoy the journey and in order to get there. And uh, I thought maybe we could uh, stop now uh, a little bit and do a meditation exercise on these two qualities. And I'd like to do another exercise a bit later and then hopefully we'll have time for a, for a final meditation also. So uh, let's take some reflection time on these two elements of joy and balance in order to dedicate to whatever we need to dedicate to. And I saw in your program that you had actually done some work on finding something you want, an action planning. <laughs> to dedicate yourself to something, but, and you maybe talked about dedicating yourself to your stage, which we will also talk, I will share to you about, but let's think of something you want to dedicate to like a more practical thing. When I say the word dedication, uh, what comes to your mind first? Is it to God's task? Is it to a project you're working on? Is it to your family? Is it to whatever? Is it to hospital care? <laughs> Is it to your job? When this word dedication, when you hear it, what pops up in your mind first? Or maybe you have something you need to dedicate to, but you have problems with it. Could be anything. But pick one thing. So we start the ref reflection by relaxing. Always relaxing first. So take a deep breath.
Now take another deep breath. Now relax in my body. I relax my legs, my stomach. I relax my shoulders. my face. <clears throat> I turn my attention within. And I relax. And I relax a bit more. And I settle into this very moment. Reflecting on dedication. Bring one thing to your mind that you are dedicated to. And having this situation or project or person in your mind, ask your heart how your heart relates to this. How is your heart relating, feeling? Ask your heart how this, how it feels and thinks about dedication and what you have chosen. Whatever feelings comes up, you accept whatever comes and I don't judge it. And now find the element of joy in this situation you're thinking of. What is it that brings joy? What makes me happy when I think of it? And when you get this, find this element of joy, you will have an inner smile when you remember it. And see yourself moving towards completion with a smile, with joy, with happiness. And moving towards completion we can see that it's both the journey and the result 
I have to take care of. So bring the end product, the result very clearly in your mind and fill it with colors. Feel the final result with fragrance. Give it a form. And enjoy. but also see the journey towards this result. See yourself walking, traveling, moving. See the process. And make sure you travel lightly. With happiness, with balance, with care. For you, what's the most important qualities for the process? And slowly we return back. Take a deep breath and come back from the reflection. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that reflection and um, we will do another exercise very soon. Uh, I, so the first two, uh, let's go back to the four qualities that support my personal dedication. So the first one was joy and the second was the balance. So the third one, it's, um, it, I, maybe it's because I'm a nurse, I don't know, but this deep uh, value of care, being caring, compassion, love, and uh, I wouldn't be able to dedicate myself to anything if I, if I didn't come from a position of care. And in the working with the environment and that really has brought new perspective on caring for me, because as we are from healthcare, many of us, I suppose we are all caring people, Everyone is a caring person, basically, because love is the basic quality of all of us in the whole world. But some to more extent than others, maybe. But um, uh, working with the environment, I realized I had to expand my caring. Because to feel care for other people or to feel care for relationship or for a task is not enough or even to feel care for yourself or for your relationship to God is not enough because so I have to extend my care to include matter and the elements which in the final product means actually the whole planet because caring is coming really from within. And if care only reach people or living beings, then it is too much connected to the object. It's not coming really deep within. So if I really live deeply from care, I care about everything, even it's living or non-living. 
and caring about the body. Wow, what the body is a fantastic instrument we've been given to look after very well. You know, for me, the body is like a, maybe a piano would be for a musician. That's the way you express yourself. And if you only have one piano and you are a musician, you would for sure look after it very well. So it's the same for the, for the body. We have to look after it. And, uh, you know, we also have to look after the earth. We, we breathe from the earth. We eat the food. We walk on it. We drink the water. And I will only look after it if I have this come from a position of care. But sometimes this issue of separation can come in in our consciousness. So we have to practice non-separation. We are connected. In the environment field, they talk a lot about interconnection. Everything is interconnected. And we know that. So uh, we, in the world of social media, we know it even more. <laughs> one little comment from one little person in a little country can go worldwide in no time. So we are so connected, actually, and we affect each other all the time. So we are connected, we matter. And we have to make sure we look after that connection with a lot of care. Because only if I care will I take responsibility. And responsibility is the main one of the main qualities for a successful life and also to look after the planet. And the last quality, the last value I put for myself was actually humility. And I can't say I'm a humble person. I can't say that because you can't say that about yourself. But uh, I, I value it very much. <laughs> and uh, close to humility is also being gratitude for whatever you have. And as uh, I used to do this course in business before, self-managing leadership course for people in business background, I found out very quickly that some of the most successful people in the in big companies, they are not known to the world. Actually, the more is being humble is critical to grow a successful business. And when you think of international big business, yes, you know the CEO and you know the person and they are world famous probably, but most companies is not like that. And uh, so, and I also know from personal experience when in being involved in service or big projects that it's very windy there in the forefront where <laughs> you are very visible. It's a kind of stormy position to be in the front. And I find being a bit in the background gives me much more opportunities to do things. You have more free hands, you're not watched all the time, and you can sort of make connections, um, innovation, you can have so many opportunities. If I just take a little bit in the background, and I enjoy that a lot. I enjoy sort of take opportunities as they come and grow them. And uh, uh, that is easier in the background, but that uh, well, has to be natural to stay there. So I don't feel I'm, I'm being compromised or overlooked or not respected or anything, but it's a big joy. And I realized uh, taking responsibility for a project or for a situation can also mean insecurity, right? Will I be able to do it? Will people like it or not? Will they like me or not? Or is my contribution accurate? Is it relevant? <laughs> is it intelligent? And uh, you're, they say that the fear of being ignored and the fear, fear of not being accepted is the biggest fear equal to the fear of death. And that, of course, those insecurity comes up when one takes responsibility. But I realized 
one day and the bicycle. This, uh, this is how I remember my insights. I remember where I had them. <laughs> it's my own memories. I remember this one was on the bicycle in going through a park in Copenhagen. Is that I realized, wow, uh, that people can reject my ego and my attachment and my anger, but they can't actually reject the soul or the real me. So a lot of insecurities is uh, attached to this not being accepted or rejected or ignored. And uh, wow, I thought my vices, my enemies, my weaknesses can be rejected, but not actually me as a person, me, the being. And that was such a liberation to free the spirit of... Uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, more humility and more joy and care. So uh, I'll, I'll thought, yeah, maybe we stop here and have another reflection on these two qualities. So I'll ask you to go back to your relaxed position and get it straight back so you're circulation can reach your head <laughs> and take a deep breath maybe close your eyes if you want even and make sure the body hasn't become tense in the meantime that the shoulders are relaxed and not stick to your ears. And we take a few deep breaths. I breathe in deeply. And I breathe out very slowly. And again, a deep breath and slowly out. Breathing deeply makes me humble. Breathing deeply makes me remember I'm breathing the same air as everybody else on this planet. Breathing deeply makes me feel connected to all living beings and to the planet. Breathing deeply helps me to settle in to the very moment I'm in. So stay here in this very moment where I can relax and breathe. And I go back to this object on my dedication, that which I'm dedicated to. And I bring it up in the screen of my mind. And I ask myself, if I have resistance anywhere, 
Is there an element of resistance to my dedication? And if I find a resistance, ask yourself, what is that all about? What does the resistance want to tell me? And whatever I find, let's embrace it with a lot of love. We care, we compassion. I awaken the feeling of care and compassion for myself, for all living beings, for everything that doesn't work, for all complications, for all negativity. I embrace it. I love care and compassion. I embrace the whole world in my unlimited heart. And then we take a deep breath and we come back from the reflection. Okay. So um, I would like to give some time at the end to questions and dialogues. I hope maybe you all are thinking of what four values are supporting your dedication. And um, for me, to dedicate half time doesn't work. <laughs> I tried once, there was uh, something happening in a center in the UK and I was asked to help. And I was a bit flattered being asked and I really wanted to help, to help us because I wanted to work with the people in the group. And uh, I said, but I didn't have time. And so I said, okay, I really want to help. I'm happy you asked me, but I, 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 I'm so many things on going on now, but I can help half time. You know, I will be on the sidelines supporting a little bit as much as I can. So I will be kind of half time in the group, half helper. And everyone agreed to that, but it was a disaster from my side. It just didn't work. And uh, because, um, Somehow, it, yeah, I never joined the group fully. I never joined the relationship fully. I never joined the task fully. So it ended up from disaster from my side. So I was <laughs> withdraw from it and I was never asked to do this again with these people in this setting. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> maybe it was my ego who said yes or no. But I just realized from that time on that if that happens again, I will have to say no, either I do it 100% or I don't. That's basically it for my side, <clears throat> which is a very good experience to have. 
And, uh, but then coming towards the end, I would say that uh, the final dedication of all dedication, I think you have talked about in the morning, and that would be to dedicate yourself to spiritual progress, right? And uh, the, life, the world is going through a very difficult time. And um, the world is calling more and more for yogis, for people who are detached and loving, for people who don't get uh, drowned in all the bad news from everywhere, but, can, but who have focus on cleaning themselves and healing themselves and get ready for being able to help not only other people, but the whole world. And daddy, you know that we all call it being an angel. So uh, that would be the ultimate dedication, I assume, to your final stage where everything is clean in your heart to spiritual progress. To be an angel, to be an instrument for uh, for creating a new world when there is no suffering left. I often ask myself, it's possible to be 100% happy if there is suffering in the world. <laughs> if someone is not, if someone is suffering, is it possible to be 100% happy if we're all interconnected? And somehow I don't think so, but it's a question of discussion. But how do we, how far do I, so dedication to my spirit of progress would also mean to, to make sure that my timetable, my meditation, I don't compromise on these things. That my meditation and my spiritual study actually is higher than completion of a project. And how far, how, 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 how far do we, have we come in our spiritual progress? How dedicated are we? And how do I know how to measure things on the soft side of life? I remember uh, our late author and BK Brahma Kumaris, Anthony Strano, you would all know him. He used to say that the only source of happiness for an angel is to be used by God. And I thought that sums up very nicely what we talked about today, about joy, about being instrument. But how far do I know and then how dedicated I am to my spiritual progress? How, 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 do, how do I know how far I've come? And I suppose we can... Uh, we can measure it on our relationships. So that's what I'm doing personally at the moment. I'm checking all my relationships and see if there is any negativity anywhere or apprehension or slight dislike or little irritation on other people. Mm. Because uh, uh, my ability to work with others, to work with different kind of people, to work with difficult people, so to say, all these things is an indication how far I've come in my spiritual progress and, and my ultimate dedication. Manoj, you unmute yourself. Yeah, I know. <laughs> No, I thought you have stopped. Sorry, uh, you can. Uh, yeah. I think, yeah. Actually, uh, thank you so much for this. I didn't know you are a nurse. It's you. It's your fault. You should have told me in your CV. But I must say that uh, you nurses are all dedicated. And my, I need to acknowledge today one more soul. She's there in front of us. She's Deborah from Florida. I would like to read. I mean, read. She's mentioned something which is very. Uh, Shocking in one way. She's also a retired nurse, probably. She's written RN. I'll come to you, Sister Deborah, in a while. And she's retired due to disability. Yeah. And uh, TBI means, I think, total body irradiation. She's been stabbed 10 times in Alaska. So, <laughs> yeah. okay. So I think uh, we can just hear from, if you can just unmute Sister Anu uh, and Sister Deborah, we only have a few minutes. 
So if you can just be very brief, if you want to share something, I'm just asking you to unmute. So you can just unmute yourself now. Yeah. Oh, good morning. Well, morning over here anyway. <laughs> uh, so happiness with suffering, it can be very hard. Um, but boy, this has been just what I needed. So, okay, I lived in Alaska and I was stabbed 10 times getting into the car to go to work as an RN one morning. And um, I did everything I could do to save my, to stay alive. And Dottie Golsar afterwards, when I went, finally got to go back to India, she, I spoke with all the Dotties individually, and she said, these bodies are, sorry, the TBI is a brain injury, so excuse me. These bodies are, what's the word, you guys, come on, uh, invaluable, invaluable. These bodies are invaluable as especially at this time. So mm -hmm. I did, and I had been shown a, um, a vision years, eight years before I was a BK, that I had a role to play at the end. And so I'm like, I can't leave yet. It's not time. And I fought, fought, fought to live. So the saddest thing just to say was that I couldn't, because the body was just 100% pain everywhere. And there was no position of comfort. So people were coming and praying over me and reading poetry and beautiful, beautiful things. And normally I can feel that subtle spirit, but there wasn't. And so all the time I'm talking to Baba in my head and I go, Baba, I this was the saddest. Baba, I can't find you. I can't feel you. Where are you? <laughs> And after about three days, I finally could feel that he was right over my, right, standing over me and um, and he was with me. And also in my eyes, because I'd been in the on many times, in my eyes, it was Pandav Bhawan, that big Baba's light. That's, I didn't have any BK, anybody with me in Alaska. So that's what I used. And so in front of me was Baba's light. And then um, later when I did counseling, because phobia was over my head, anybody at all that I don't know, they're going to kill me. And I, I had no reins of my life. Uh, you know, it was just over my head. So I went to a friend of mine was my counselor, which was so beneficial. And she did, um, EMDR, eye movement desensitizing, reprocessing. I'm sorry, I haven't talked about it in a long time. She did EMDR with me, not with eye movement because my eyes were damaged. Um, I had double vision and the pupil didn't work and all these things. So, so she used my hearing. You use two senses and my, and I held these vibrating things in my head and that's how we did it. But she knew she needed me to have somebody with me on the street when we revisited the scene, like the guy jumping out behind the, from behind the car. And I'm laying on the ground, ask, yelling, help, call 911 immediately. I'm badly hurt. And so, um, so I said, Baba's eyes. No, no, I didn't. Yes, I did use the word Baba because she didn't know what I was talking about. And I explained, I said, Baba's eyes. So Dottie Golsar stood on the sidewalk. Every time I revisited the scene, Dottie Golsar was with me. Baba's eyes were with me. Our knowledge that we have, this, this venue that you did today, I'm so thankful a friend in in Southwest Florida invited me all of a sudden and I chimed in. Thank you, it's exactly what I needed today. And um, the distraction I have is that I cower. I'm, I'm scared to be what I wanna be, but I'm starting to become it more and more. <laughs> and um, Sister Sonia, if that's how you say it, what a beautiful smile, thank you for sharing. Om Shanti. 
Thank you so much. So all was in the divine drama plan. You were supposed to join and therefore you got the invitation. So I think our time is just running very fast ahead. And I would now request for Sister Claudia, who's supposed to go soon because she's got an appointment. So I would request Sister Claudia first to propose the vote of thanks, followed by Dr. Ashok Mehta. So over to you, Sister Claudia. <laughs> Actually, before Claudia uh, comes on and we finish, I have one more thing I wanted to say. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And that was uh, because it was the environment, uh, uh, I think my work with the environment that made you ask Manoj Pai or the team. So I thought uh, um, you should, if you have time, go to our website. It's echo.brahmakumaris.org. I put it in the chat. And just have a look at all the fantastic work that's happening with the big team. And the next climate change conference is coming up in Dubai, in COP in November. And um, uh, Brahma Kumar's overall theme is on consciousness and climate change. And we work on lifestyle change, on awareness change, and we share our in investment in uh, solar energy and so on. And we have many articles on care and compassion for all living beings. And thank you, Deborah, for sharing. So I say thank you very much. And it was a joy meeting you all. Thank you. Yeah, and before I give it to Sister Claudia, just one second quickly. Yeah, so uh, Brother Golo, and you have done extensive work on this echo.brahmakumaris.org, and I have listened to a lot of your interactions uh, at Gyatsarovar sessions online, obviously, oh, during the double foreigner session. So I think all of you would please visit that website. It's echo.brahmakumaris.org. So thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, over to you, Sister Claudia. Thank you. Oh, Shanti, good morning from our side. So it's nice to hear you and special have you for, for the first time with us. It is a pleasure. And I just like to say, yes, many times we care about patients and we forget about to care about ourselves because we kind of feel mercy for them and we have hope that they are going to get better and we get happy when they get better and then we forget ourselves that is usually and i try to all the time to remind myself i need to take care of myself first and then i can share with the other ones so well thank you for reminding that <laughs> to us and then uh, it was very nice to see how you put the dedication with the four qualities Actually, I'm going to check on that one and then see which what is the qualities that makes me to dedicate my life to all those all those years. And of course, we become double doctors because we also look after the spiritual side. So so anyhow, so we have to be double uh, careful too. So thank you very much. It was a pleasure to hear from you. Thank you. And over to you, Dr. Mehta. Thank you, Sister Claudia. Yeah. Uh, I remember Baba's words, Kushi on Chehera. Your, your happiness is expressed on your face all along. <laughs> your smile, I, as I, I think Sister Deborah said the same thing, watching for all the time, your smile is just captivating, outstanding. As a matter of fact, I think uh, such a lovely face uh, is representative of Baba's deep knowledge expressed through your face. The energy that you exude is um, am amazing. Um, what you said was everything was so beautiful. Uh, I think, and finally, you have, apart from being a nurse who has looked after through a complete dedication. Uh, the, the proof of the pudding is that you have finally gone to look after the earth, Mother Earth. I think uh, that's, that's a, another expression of great love for the environment. And I've seen Golobai and uh, work right from day one on the environment. And I think uh, the dedication both to the patient care 
and to the environment is the ultimate that one can think of in terms of dedication. Congratulations. Thank you very much for sharing your beautiful smile and beautiful views with all of us. Om Shanti. Thank you, Dr. Mehta. And uh, you are also a very dedicated person. So you are the right one to speak in this session because your dedication is also famous. I don't know all the others so well. So thank you for Manoj and Claudia and the whole team. So we won't let you go so soon. <laughs> we have a couple of more minutes. And if I can request all the people to on their camera so that we can click a memorable photograph with Sister Sonia. So over to Sister Anu for that. And then I'll do the announcements shortly. And then we'll have a closing meditation as always. Okay. So everyone, please you can switch on your videos for the memorable photo with Sister Sonia. Yeah. It's done, yeah. Thank you. So we'll just quickly move into this uh, announcements. And if you all want to deepen the experience of dedication, so I would really invite you to join the silence retreat, which is happening in 11 hours, exact 11 hours from now. So 8.30 morning India time. And for the West Coast, US and Canada, it's 8 p.m. this very day. And we have once a month silence retreat, usually on the last Sunday of the month. So that's tomorrow for us in India and for the West Coast later in the evening. And this will be on dedication. It's a way to go into silence and we we'll listen to a few uh, meditation commentaries as well. And also a few divine versions from the Supreme Almighty Authority through Dadi Gulzar, as you all heard from Sister Deborah as well. And uh, going back, uh, sorry, moving forward to the series, we are 71 episode number, it's Guidance uh, by Brother Mike George. We have really been missing him since many times due to some other commitments. And uh, he will be giving Mark Darshan or Salah on the same, that's the Urdu and the Hindi word. It's on the 5th August, the same time, and uh, it's next Saturday. And again, we have missed another speaker, Sister Valerian from Switzerland. She'll be Again, as we are doing today, the workshop, two weeks from now, again on 12th August, she'll be guiding us on guidance. There you are. And this is our elegant calendar for August. So we'll be sending you all the review material with all these uh, announcements as well in the emails. And I think quite a few people have shared their WhatsApp numbers as well. So these are our websites. And please feel free to email us on our emails as well. They're in front of you. And all these workshops and the episodes are all available on these links, which you can look down. It's omshanti.tk forward slash workshops. And for the episodes, it's forward slash playlist, forward slash English, Spanish, French, whatever you want to hear. In. So thank you so much for all of you. Uh, and we will now go into the meditation or drishti, whatever suits you, sister. So thanks. Okay. So let's uh, take a short meditation. And you all take a deep breath again. And relax. And when I breathe deeply, I remember who I am. I remember the beauty of the light inside. So take a deep breath. I remember the divine who will always care for me forever. And as I take a deep breath, 
we send love and light to the whole earth. We can put the earth in your hands, place the planet in your hands. Let God's energy work through you, flow through you, and you embrace the planet with care and compassion. And all living beings, and you heal the pain and the suffering as an angel of light. I'm dedicated to this task alone. And we take a deep breath, come back to this moment with gratitude. Om Shanti. Om Shanti, thank you so much for your presence and for your wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for allowing me to be with you. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you.